Good morning, dear children. I am your animus. How are you all? I hope you all fine. Children, what we studied in our last class? Ah, yes, we studied materials from plants. So today we are going to learn about materials from animals. We get materials such as silk and leather from animals. We get silk from an insect that is called silk worm. That fiber, silk fiber, they are using for making sari and scarf. See children, this is one silk sari. This sari made with silk fibers. I will show you some silk fibers. See, these are the silk fibers. This silk fibers, they are also using for making scarf and all. Okay children. And children, do you know anything about uh, silk production? Ah, they are keeping this silk worms to grow and for feed, they are feeding that to, uh, lava with mulberry leaves these lava become cocoon after uh, become cocoon they are boiling these cocoons they are boiling it and also doing some procedure after this procedure they are getting the fibers which fiber silk fiber this fiber they are using for making sari uh, scarves etc Okay children, if you want to know more about silk production, I will upload one video along with this class. You can see that. Okay children, next we can see about wool. We get wool fiber from the fur of some animals like uh, sheep, goat, camel etc. Okay, these uh, wool fibers using for making clothes like warm clothes like a sweater, cap, socks. And uh, see, gloves, etc. This will give, give us warm. Okay, we are using for getting warm. Once again, I will explain. We are getting wool from, uh, wool fiber from some animals like a goat, sheep, camel, etc. These wool fibers we are using for making some clothes like a warm clothes like a sweater, scarf. Uh, gloves etc. Okay children. Next we can see about leather. We get leather from the skin of animals such as goat, buffalo, oxen etc. Okay children. This skin of the uh, animals we are using for making things like uh, shoes, belt, bag etc. Okay. These things are we are using in our day to day life, daily life, we are using this type of things that we are getting from the animal skin. Some animal skin. Which type of animals do you know? The animals such as oxen, goat, buffalo, etc. Okay children, once again I will explain. We get leather from the skin of some animals like oxen, goat and buffalo. These skins we are using for making things such as bags, shoes, a belt etc. Okay children. Okay. See children. In our textbook there they given in the green corner. Some animals are killed to make a leather. We can help save animals by avoiding the use of leather products. What they are meaning children. See. Some animals are killed to make a leather. We can help save animals by avoiding the use of leather products. We all like leather products. Yes or no children. Yes. Everybody like for getting for taking this leather they are killing lots of animals like a goat uh, buffalo etc okay children so if what we can do for that if we are if we are avoiding the products of leather we can save the life of this type of animals right so for this purpose we have to create some posters i'll show you some posters see the posters children How is the poster children? Ah, like that you also prepare one poster in an attractive way. Give one heading and also if you know to draw you can draw some pictures and give some caption something like that and prepare a nice poster and whatsapp that posters to you. Best posters I will post in your whatsapp group. Okay children. This is today's activity. Okay, we can conclude once again. What we studied today? We studied materials what we get from animals. First we said silk fibers. From where we are getting silk fibers? Uh, we are getting silk fibers from the 
uh, from an insect that is called the silk worm. That is silk fibers we are using for making sarees, uh, shawls, uh, scarves, etc. Right. Next, what we study? Uh, wool. Wool we are getting from fur of the animals such as goat, sheep, camel, etc. That fibers we are using for making warm clothes like a sweaters, cap, uh, gloves, etc. Right, children. Then last we studied leather. Leather we are getting from the skin of some animals such as a goat, oxen, buffalo, etc. That skin we are using for making the things like a, a shoes, bag, a belt, etc. Okay. This many things we studied today and we said we have to save the life of some animals like a goat, buffalo, oxen, etc. For that purpose, we have to avoid the things of leather for saving the life of these animals. And everybody do today's activity very nicely and a very creative way. Okay, children. So, we, today we can wind up. Everybody stay safe at home and study well. Do your activity well. We'll see you in the next class. Thank you. Ever since human beings invented clothes, a variety of fibers have been discovered or invented to suit changes in time, climate and fashion. Silk is one out of many fabrics that have been in vogue over millennia despite drastic changes in our tastes. Since it was discovered, fine, strong, lustrous silk has been wooing the world. The cultivation of silk and the craft of silk weaving are even more fascinating. We thought it would be interesting to get an insight into the story of a silk thread. Let's begin with the backbone of sericulture, the silkworm. Commercial silk is obtained by cultivating different species of silkworm. The most widely and commercially used species is Bombex mori, native to Asia. Silkworms are soft-bodied, slow-moving and relatively fast-growing insects. Like other insects, silkworms too go through four stages of development – egg, larva, pupa and adult. The larva is a caterpillar. The pupa is what the silkworm changes into after spinning its cocoon before emerging as a moth. Since the silkworm grows so drastically, it must shed its skin four times during its growth. These stages within a stage are called instars. The eggs normally hatch during summers, which coincide with the mulberry tree regaining its leaves after shedding them in winter. Eggs hatch within 25 days depending on the weather, with warmer weather hastening the hatching process. A silkworm's preferred food is white mulberry leaves, though they may eat leaves of other mulberry species as well. Due to the practices of our ancestors, silkworms have become fully dependent on humans. They eat continuously and therefore need to be fed at least twice a day. New hatched silkworms are tiny and feed on young and tender mulberry leaf shoots. The mature silkworms eat more mature leaves. As the pupae continuously eat, the containers get filled up with their excreta. These therefore need to be cleaned periodically. Furthermore, silkworms are prone to diseases. Farmers must maintain a high standard of hygiene for rearing and handling these precious creatures. In addition to this, the containers should be maintained in such a way as to prevent other insects like ants from invading. After 20 to 33 days of constantly munching away mulberry leaves, the silkworms feel the urge to cocoon. At this stage, the silkworms are a pretty sight. They become translucent and acquire a yellowish hue. Just before it begins cocooning, the silkworm excretes a runny fluid to clean out its system. It then oozes a tiny drop of silk for anchoring. Then it goes on to draw one long continuous filament of silk by swinging its head from side to side. 
It takes a silkworm around 48 hours to fully complete this process. The result is a perfectly ovate cocoon made of a single continuous strand of silk measuring up to 1 kilometer in length. After 10 to 14 days of developing inside the chrysalis, the silk moth appears from the cocoon. Silk moths cannot fly due to thousands of years of domestication. They need human assistance in finding a mate and lack fear of potential predators. However, almost immediately after emerging from their cocoons, male silk moths leave their containers in search of a female mate. Olfactory hairs on the male's antennae help them detect pheromones released by the females. It is easy to distinguish between the male and female silk moths due to the slightly larger abdomen of the females. The males also tend to be more active. The average lifespan of silk moths is a paltry 5 to 10 days even though males generally live longer than their female counterparts. After mating, a female moth will lay between 300 to 500 eggs before dying. The male moths, if not too old, continue to search for another mate. Reeling or the process of drawing silk yarn should be started before silk moths emerge from their cocoons. Once the moths emerge, the shell is of no use because the adult emerges by piercing the cocoon shell. To prevent this, cocoons are either dried in a dryer or stifled in steam. This action kills the pupae inside, thereby allowing farmers to obtain more cocoons fit for reeling. Before reeling, the cocoons are processed in hot water at 95 to 97 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. This cooking makes the unwinding easier without breaking the thread. In India, silk is reeled on country-type charkhas or spinning wheels. The silk thus produced is substandard, uneven and carries many slubs. Improved cottage type or large scale basins for the extraction of superior quality fiber have been introduced in recent years. Once the silk is reeled, weavers and tailors put in their creativity, art and labor to create gorgeous drapes and fabrics to cater to the demands of the market. This sums up the story of how your favorite gown or gorgeous sari came into being.